Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Sky Factory 2.5. We're here. Not much has changed, maybe a little bit. I have started consolidating some of the chests around here, trying to clean up a bit, a little bit more at least. But what are we going to be doing today? Today we are going to be messing about with some more RF Tools dimlets. So let's get started. Well, ladies and gentlemen, last time we were together, we worked on automatically researching dimlets that were coming out of our AE system. And let me just, uh, let's just show you a little bit about what has changed around here. So since, since we were together, I have turned this into a little bit more of a formalized corner. This is the RF Tools Dimension Corner. I took all those machines that we built, put them up here, and we've got power running to all of them. You'll note that I have... A, an explicit, uh, what is this, Tesseract here, right on the Dimension Builder. That's because the Dimension Builder is going to be powering the dimensions that we create with these dimlets, and it needs, it will potentially need a lot of power, a lot more than the Ender IO power or energy conduit can actually provide. Over in this corner, we've got where we'll actually be dialing in to the different worlds. So we've got our dialing device and, and we can set the transmitter to a receiver in another dimension. And then we've also got our, uh, what is it, receiver. So transmitter, this is where we'll go out to another dimension. This is where we'd come back if we were dialing in, but we do have our, uh, we need, uh, what is that? The dislocation thing. I think that may have gotten yeah, Charm of Dislocation. We need that. That would be good. All right, so here is where we're going to be teleporting, and over there is where we mess with dimlets. Now, if you take a look in the top left corner up here, you can see my mouse cursor. We're at day 2391. If you happen to go back and look at the previous episode, we ended at day 2043. There have been over 300 or almost 350 days in the world since then. What have I been doing? I've been sitting here just waiting for the Enderman farm to run. And we've actually filled up two sets of RF uh, of the modular storage. And we've got a little bit more in this one. So I've been consolidating the Rarity 5s and, well, a little bit more up here. So I've got these sorted on Dimlet Rarity. Let's drop down to here. Look at that. We've got a Rarity 6 of... Uh, out of that Enderman farm, but it took 350 days in-game. 350 in-game days. That's day-night cycles to do that. Multiple nights just sitting here AFK, letting that run uh, while I was off doing other things. And we've, we've got one rarity six. That's how rare they are. There are other ways of getting those, including going into dimensions. And we also probably need to look at increasing our enderman spawning capability so the end is great we've got a cursed earth farm over there it's producing pretty well but dimlets are a rare commodity indeed so what i've done is over here um, i have added an addition to our mob spawner and what we're going to do is we're going to use the draconic evolution um, mob spawner stabilized mob spawner to uh, really get some more Enderman going. The reason I'm doing this right here is because the spawner that we're going to be using is a blaze spawner. I really don't want to mess with them. Actually, you know what? Let's get a fire resist potion. Yeah, that's an eight minute. That should be fine. So let's do that. And then we can just drink this just in case for grins and giggles. Okay, so... Uh, next order of business. I did not want to do that. Let's do bag. It's the project bag. Okay. As soon as we get this diamond dolly out, it is going to give us a slowness or a mining fatigue. So let's just do that. And what we're going to do is go right here like so. And then we take the draconic core, stabilize it, and then we're going to put that in there. And they start hitting me immediately. Okay, and I don't want that burning. Okay, excellent. 
Uh, maybe I should get some cursed earth. That that cursed earth is not going to spread right now because the lights are on. So let's do this. It's from where I made a mistake earlier. So because we are going to be having Enderman spawn in here, we have to do like we did in the end and protect the corners. So I've done that. I'm just going to reduce the efficiency a bit, but I think that's fine. The next order of business, we want to uh, take a look here. You can see over, oh, you can't see it once I put the tab on. In the left-hand side of the screen, you can see right here on kind of a Wayla, if you will, We've got mob type Enderman requires player true, and then the ignore spawn requirements is false, spawner tier is one. Okay, what we wanna do is increase this a little bit. We want to not require the player at all. What What's he doing? Is he taking damage? Huh. Well, what we're gonna do is put that and say, uh, require requires player false okay so it no longer requires the player and then the next order of business is to put a wyvern core is that right did I not get one of those do we have one let's see wyvern core yeah let's do that just make one okay so we got one of those and then that way what we can do is put this on and we will start getting a spawner tier two. Yeah, this is a good thing. Okay, next order of business. We need to come up here and we will replace the block that we got there. Uh, no, you know what? I have lights in here. So let's knock off the lights. And there we go. We should start getting a lot of Enderman spawns soon. Yep, and then we'll turn on the fans and that will make sure that they all fall into there. Yep. Okay, so it doesn't require doesn't require the player and we've got the wyvern core. It's going to be creating Enderman. Okay, so we'll start getting some more dimlets out of that just because we need we need some more rarity sixes. The reason why, let's uh, let's go into the manual. I did bring that out. Let's take a look here. We're going to be crafting this dimlet unless we happen to get it out of the Enderman farm or what we're going to be working on a little bit later. But we've got this workbench here and uh, we've already built it. But what you do is you take a dimlet, you put it in there and it breaks it into multiple constituent parts. You can kind of see how they all line up here. It doesn't quite show right there, but we can go in and take a little bit deeper of a look. So you need a base item, a control circuit, energy module, memory module, and type controller, and the essence item. You can't get essence out of the actual dimlet. You have to apply that. That's what you're doing when you're crafting. So we're gonna need a mob type controller. We need a special memory module, energy module. The control circuit is the one I'm after with the rarity six. We have to get a rarity six control circuit. And so, that's why I need multiple Rarity 6 Dimlets, or, or potential multiple. Now, the thing with uh, this Dimlet, uh, Dimlet Craft, or yeah, Dimlet Workbench, um, when you put, put the Dimlet in there, you may not get everything out. There's a 40% chance for every part that you get nothing, okay? That means that if I put that Rarity 6 Dimlet in there, we could maybe not even get the control circuit. I want a 100% chance. So we need to infuse this workbench and we do that with dimensional shards and a an RF tools infuser, which we don't have right now. I haven't created that or I haven't crafted it, but we need some dimensional shards. We've got some from different loot bags along the way. We've got a few in here, 25, but for 100% infusing, you need four stacks. So I want to infuse every every possible machine that we can infuse. I want to infuse it so we need some dimensional shards, which means we need to actually create an RF tools world. And I see that it is nighttime. Um, so we're going to have to create an RF tools world and I've got just the thing for that. And uh, I'll show you how to put that together. Um, before we do though, 
we're going to be getting dimensional shards out of that and also in RF tools dimensions buildings appear um, that have dimlets both uh, unknown and already researched ones and so we're going to need to send those back so what I'm going to do is I've got this ender pouch here we're going to make that that's the recipe for it we're going to attach that to the uh, what is it the ender chest what what do I hear fire oh fires over there um, we're going to attach the ender pouch to the ender chest that's pulling out the dimlets that's that way we can send them directly to that storage rather than sending them into our ME system we're also going to need a phase field generator this should start yeah because we've got a wireless charger so we're going to need that just in case our dimension is not highly powered enough okay now next order of business we need to take this ender pouch and we will uh, let's get rid of some of the stuff in our inventory. We don't need the dimension manual anymore. We will send that back. And there we go. Okay. What you do is you take an ender pouch and you right click. Okay. So notice now on the ender pouch, it's got the cyan, black, and light gray. It's the same as if we were looking at it like this. And so once we open here, you notice that that ender chest opens up and we can send stuff directly into it, which is pretty cool. Next, we need to prepare this thing. We're gonna grab some item conduit, and we're going to do like so. We're going to set this with an item filter, set it to blacklist, and set unknown dimlets on there, and we will extract always, okay? So the regular dimlets are going to go into, we need a whitelisted item there Let's see do we have any other filters no 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 no. so we need to go up to a crafting terminal are there wireless crafting terminals i want to know about that i don't know if there are uh, filter yeah we need one of these do we have all of that no paper craft yeah we'll just do some of that and then we need a hopper as well we should have plenty of chests those mobs that have the different character skins on them those end up dropping chests and so we end up with a bunch of chests in here and that's a, a good thing what we're going to do here is we want uh, this filter in here and then unknown dimlet on a whitelist so Unknown dimlets will go into the researcher. Regular dimlets will go into the RF tools or the modular storage over here. And I've got these set up such that they will uh, go to this one first, highest priority there, lowest or next lower, next lowest, and then next lowest. So if we end up needing more, there's a couple more. Um, we can do one and zero. So we can add a couple more modular storage units there if necessary. So we've got all that. Let's put away that and then what we're gonna do ah yeah I need to go over here and how much is it gonna take to soul bound this thing six okay let's come here and grab uh, enough probably more than enough let's do that okay and then we'll store the rest and then we'll go back down here okay and what we're gonna do is build a dimlet we're going to oh there we go it got an achievement awesome now in this pack bacon donut has set all worlds all dimensions to void so even if we did standard terrain in these dimlets we wouldn't get any actual terrain so we have to use features to get the uh, the materials that we want we're going to try and get some dimensional shard ores okay so the material has to go, material, liquid, various other things have to go before that, which they modify. And so this material is modifying the huge orbs dimlet. We're going to put effect none and weather default. And yeah, that's going to be what well, we've got at least a 50, 50 maintain, 60, 61, 8,061. For the maintenance cost at least it may end up being more we've got what this one will generate uh, max it can generate 5,000 or 5400 
5,400. Okay, so we should have enough. We've got more than enough energy. We've got a lot of backlog there. We've got, what, 5,400 times 4. So we've got plenty of RF for this dimension. We're going to run into issues later, but I think what we can do is say um, that we've got enough for now. So we'll do that. What's the cost? Maintenance cost is 14,471. Hmm. 14,471. And 5,400, that's going to be three of those. Let's see if we can put a special uh, special efficiency on there. Um, that, was, that was a rarity four or a rarity five? I can't remember. Let's see. Special efficiency, we will do that. And let's try. Dim shard. Try that again. Okay, 11577. That's going to be well worth it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this into our, our dimension builder. And notice tons and tons of energy going into this thing. Dimension progress is at 10%. So it's going to take a little while. So let's, uh, you know, let's just speed past this. All right. It has fully created so we're at a hundred percent now it's got to fill up the current power and I think this thing holds something like four million RF and it looks like it's going up I did add an additional tesseract on here just in case and if necessary we can add another one but we need to make sure that this thing has plenty of RF yeah we are doing quite well all right so we shouldn't have a problem, but we've got this phased field generator just in case we have any issues. So what we're going to do is say home dim shard dial. Okay. I do have a destination analyzer on here. That's going to tell us that we've got plenty of power. So it'll be red if there's not enough power and the d dimension is dangerous to go into. Um, if you don't know about RF tools, if you go into a dimension that is unpowered, then what's going to happen is you will lose your life. So we definitely don't want that happening. And that's one of the reasons why we've got this phased field generator as well. That's going to power the dimension for a little bit just in case we run into issues. And it's got to be on your hotbar, I think. You can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But anyway, we've got green. So what we're going to try and do is go in here and collect some dimensional shard ore. All right. Excellent. Plenty of dimensional shard orbs all around. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Uh, we're also looking for the buildings that happen to have more of those. Um, what is that? Oh, okay, I see. So pretty much just one of these orbs and we're going to be good. There's a slime island. Awesome. Okay. And that just cuts in. That's funny. That's funny. I like that. I like that. So let's see if we can find some of those buildings as well. We're going into terrain generation. Hopefully it is not too bad for for the video. Uh, cows are appearing. So I might have to generate some more of this terrain to get to get those um, those buildings to show up. I think we'll be fine. What I want to do is get. Um, did I bring this? Yeah. Okay. Good. Ah, there we go. That's what I want to show you. So before we go collecting more of our, some of this dimensional shard ores so we can get into infusing, I wanted to show you this thing. And is there anything in here? Nope. What we will do is turn that to on to say, hey, we've gotten this. And notice that we've got some dimlets in here now. Taiga Hills, Extreme Hills, Feature Lakes. And then if we go in here, Unknown Dimlets, Liquid Vishroom Soup and Unknown Dimlets. So what we can do now is which one of these? 
Maybe I should have named him. Hmm. Let's see if, if anything's coming through. Okay, that's red, white, and blue. There we go. So red, white, and blue we'll leave right there. This is the dimensional shard ore. So we can actually send these back. And they should go into our storage, storage area. So anyway, we've got to find some more of those. There are supposedly plenty in here. And this is another way of getting some of those rarity six. You see one right there? It's awesome. So we'll go through. I'll be doing this for a little bit. And I'll bring you back once I think we've got a pretty good read on it. Once I find a few of the rarity sixes, if if I do manage to, then we will uh, we'll stop what we're doing and and uh, head on back home. All right, back in a bit. Now I realized in all of this that I forgot to tell you about something, and that is what we've got right here. I made a manulin hammer in preparation for this effort right here. So this thing has a super amount of durability. And what I've done is I've increased the lapis on it, gone all out. Notice 450 out of 450. I can't go any further. We've also got an insane amount of, um, of redstone on it. So uh, the other thing is we do have vein miner. So we're going to see how that works. Yep, that uh, did pretty well. Okay, and we can send all of that dimensional shard ore back to our ME system. But we've got, oh my goodness, tons, tons of XP, tons of XP, oh boy. And we should have plenty of dimensional shard or our dimensional shards even now. But uh, anyway, I wanted to tell you about that before we went any further and now I'll bring you back once we actually find some more um, rarity sixes all right all right let me turn down my render distance I did have that turned up so that I could see these a little bit better but I think the recording will go a lot smoother if we turn that back down I don't see any other than the one that we're about to visit uh, no so let's just visit this one and then we will go back and see what the overall result has been. Do we have, oh, it looks like we've got somebody in here. Yep. Okay, there we go. And we'll make sure that we can get in just fine. So we'll do that, that, and that. Let's see, what do we got? Rarity one, ooh. Awesome. Rarity six. That that was not planned. That was not planned. We're going to go back and see what else we've got in the system as well. My goodness. Rarity six. So this is the key is to come out to one of these worlds. Maybe I'll generate some more, but we've at least got two rarity sixes. Do you see any more around here? I don't want to potentially leave any. Okay. So it looks like it looks like we're done for the time being. Let's head on home. Like so. I should have put that into our system here. Yeah. All right. So that should be researching now. And let's throw this in. We didn't get any gunpowder off that. And this one should be researching. Okay, so we're going through the last few of them. All right, rarity one, zero, zero, two. Okay. Oh, that was another one. All right, so I've got these sorted by rarity type. Oh, okay, so we've got we got three now. Liquid molten gold, liquid liquefied emerald, and effect health boost three. So we've got three of them. I think that might be sufficient. And let me just show you the results from uh, from grabbing a bunch of dimensional shards. All right, we got 14K. I think that should be sufficient to fully infuse every one of these RF Tools machines that we can infuse. Uh, so everything here and everything, let's see here, this one, dialing device, matter receivers, okay. 
So I'm not quite sure what they uh, what they end up doing for these. Maybe it's lower power consumption or something. I don't know. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove the dimensional shard tab from there. And we're going to put that realized dimension tab in here. And it's slowly going to lose all of the RF. Let's, let me, uh, you know what? I do want to show you how our power system does. So let's chuck this back in here. Okay, back up to our power generation thing. So output, output and input are roughly keeping up. So not a problem with that particular dimension. But when we come to the dragon dimlet, it is possible that we will have something that needs more power. So anyway, next time what we're going to do is work on the infusing and start using some of those dimensional shards and we'll see if we can't build ourselves a dragon dimlet. Anyway, we're getting close, but that, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, think about subscribing so you are up to date with everything going on on the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.